Welcome to Tuesday's Tales, Christmas edition. Now, it sounds kind of funny that I'm doing this, but it's actually June when I recorded this. But I thought to myself, while in quarantine, I had a Christmas book because I wanted to read it anyway. So I was like, well, hey, I'll just go ahead and record one of my Christmas ones for our Tuesday's Tales. So, I am talking to you from the past and... Not really the future, but the past. It's complicated. Wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. Doctor Who. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to get started with this wonderful, super fun book, If You Take a Mouse to the Movies, by Laura Numero. It's also due at the library soon, but... If you take a mouse to the movies. Now see, I want to know, is he his, like, pet mouse? Is this the same little boy? I'm wondering. Hmm. If you take a mouse to the movies, he'll ask you for some popcorn. When you give him the popcorn, He'll want to string it all together. Then he'll want to hang it on a Christmas tree. You'll have to buy him one. On the way home, he'll see a snowman in your neighbor's yard. He'll want to make one of his own. Then he'll need a carrot for a nose. When he's all finished, he'll decide to build a fort. He'll ask you to help him. Then he'll want to make some snowballs and have a snowball fight. That is a, that's a big fort. That's huge. Playing outside will make him cold. He'll want to go inside and curl up on the couch. He'll ask you for a blanket. Aww. There's a little coat hanging on the lamp. <laughs> That's so precious. Once he's nice and cozy, he'll want to listen to Christmas carols. You'll have to find some on the radio. And I'll tell you, Christmas time, you'll find them. You'll find them before Thanksgiving sometimes. He'll probably sing along. The carols will remind him of his Christmas tree, so he'll want to make ornaments. <laughs> I don't know, I think some people with Christmas carols are about in this mood here. There's some people that are this, and there's some people that are this. <laughs> You'll get him some paper and glue. He'll ask you for glitter. Uh-oh. As a person who works with people who like to use glitter a lot, I'm one of those people too. But, yeah! That's going to be a mess. When the ornaments are done... Oh my, those are pretty. He'll hang them all up. Then he'll stand back to look at the tree. So many. He'll notice his popcorn string is missing. <gasps> oh! So he'll want to make another one. He'll ask you for some popcorn. How can you say no to the face? And chances are, when you give him the popcorn, he'll want you to take him to the movies. The end. Now, 
even though it's June, I love I love to think about Christmas because I love Christmas, and Christmas traditions are always so fun at my house. Love to decorate the tree when I come home on Thanksgiving after going at Thanksgiving at my grandma's, and I love to watch Charlie Brown Christmas on Christmas Eve, and It's a Wonderful Life on Christmas Eve. Those are like the only times of the year I watch them, except maybe a couple times like with other people, but we always watch Charlie Brown Christmas first. Today, our Bible story is from the Jesus Storybook Bible. It's titled, He's Here, from Luke's chapter 1 and 2. That's in the grown-up Bible, if you weren't sure. Everything was ready. The moment God had been waiting for was here at last. God was coming to help his people, just as he promised in the beginning. But how would he come? What would he be like? What would he do? Mountains would have bowed down. Seas would have roared. Trees would have clapped their hands, but the earth held its breath. As silent as snow falling, he came in, and when no one was looking, in the darkness, he came. There was a young girl who was engaged to a man named Joseph. Joseph was the great, 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 great grandson of King David. One morning, this girl was minding her own business, when suddenly a great warrior of light appeared, right there in her bedroom. He was Gabriel, and he was an angel, a special messenger from heaven. When she saw the tall, shining man standing there, Mary was frightened. Wouldn't you be? You don't need to be scared, Gabriel said. God is very happy with you. Mary looked around to see if perhaps he was talking to someone else. Fair point. Mary, Gabriel said, and he laughed with such gladness that Mary's eyes filled with sudden tears. Mary, you are going to have a baby, a little boy. You will call him Jesus. He is God's own son. He's the one. He's the rescuer, the God who flung planets into space and kept them whirling around and around, the God who made the universe with just a word, the one who could do anything at all was making himself small and coming down as a baby. Wait. God was sending a baby to rescue the world? But it's too wonderful, Mary said, and felt her heart beating hard. How can it be true? Is anything too wonderful for God? Gabriel asked. So Mary trusted God more than what her eyes could see. And she believed, I am God's servant, she said. Whatever God says, I will do. Sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. Now Mary and Joseph had to take a trip to Bethlehem, the town King David was from. But when they reached the little town, they found every room was full. Every bed was taken. Go away, the innkeepers told them. There isn't any place for you. Where would they stay? Soon Mary's baby would come. They couldn't find anywhere except an old, tumbled-down stable. So they stayed where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. Right there. And there, in the stable, among the chickens and the donkeys and the cows, in the quiet of the night, God gave the world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born his baby son. Ding! Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm. They made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough at his cradle. As they gazed in wonder at God's great gift, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, Mary and Joseph named him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us. Because, of course, he had. Best 
to continue it. That same night, and amongst the other stars, suddenly a bright new star appeared. Of all the stars in the dark vaulted heavens, this one shone clear. It blazed in the night and made the other stars look pale beside it. God put it there when his baby son was born to be like a spotlight, shining on him, lighting up the darkness, showing people a way to him. You see, God was like a new daddy. He couldn't keep the good news to himself. He'd been waiting all these long years for this moment, and now he wanted to tell everyone. So he pulled out all the stops. He'd sent an angel to tell Mary the good news. He'd put a special star in the sky to show where his boy was, and now he was going to send a big choir of angels to sing his happy song to the world. He's here! He's come! Go and see him, my little boy. Now where would you send your splendid choir? To a big concert hall, maybe? Or a palace, perhaps? God sent his to a little hillside outside a little town in the middle of the night. He sent all those angels to sing for a raggedy old bunch of shepherds watching their sheep outside Bethlehem. In those days, remember, people used to laugh at shepherds and say that they were smelly and call them other rude names, which I can't possibly mention here. You see, people thought shepherds were nobodies, just scruffy old riffraffs. But God must have thought shepherds were very important indeed because they're the ones he chose to tell the good news to first. That night, some shepherds were out in the open, in the fields, warming themselves by a campfire when suddenly the sheep darted. They were frightened by something. The olive trees wrestled. What was that? A wing beat? They turned around. Standing in front of them was a huge warrior of light, blazing in the darkness. Don't be afraid of me, the bright, shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you. I've come to bring you happy news for everyone everywhere. Today, in David's town, in Bethlehem, God's son has been born. You can go and see him. He is sleeping in a manger. Behind the angel, they saw a strange glowing cloud, except it wasn't a cloud. It was angels, troops and troops of angels, armed with light, and they were singing a beautiful song. Glory to God. To God be fame and honor and all our hoorays. Then as quickly as they appeared, the angels left. The shepherds stamped out their fire, left their sheep, raced down the grassy hill through the gates of Bethlehem, down the narrow cobble streets, through a courtyard, down some steps and some other steps, past an inn, round a corner, through a hedge, until at last they reached a tumbled-down stable. They caught their breath, then quietly tiptoed inside. They knelt on the dirt floor. They had heard about this promised child, and now he was here. Heaven's son, the maker of the stars, a baby sleeping in his mother's arms. This baby would be like that bright star shining in the sky that night. A light to light up the whole world, chasing away darkness, helping people to see. And the darker the night got, the brighter the star would shine. So yes, even though technically when I recorded this, this is not, it's not Christmas right now, but the Christmas story is one that can be shared anytime in June, in December, in February, in April, May, June, all those other times because it was made for everybody, everywhere, forever. And I hope all of you have a very Merry Christmas. And I hope to see y'all real soon. Goodbye.